नमस्कार जी वेलकम टू अहिंसा कॉन्वर्सेशन वॉट इज योर अर्लीस्ट मेमरी ऑफ अहिंसा एज अ चाइल्ड and uh, so uh, my my lifestyle uh, i i born in this uh, tambakam village which was as a young boy i was uh, i was uh, you know seeing the non violence and the, the the social evils and beatings murders or some kind of thing even a small boy 7 7 years 8 years 9 years when i was doing uh, uh, the the fourth standard in 1969 it was the year of mahatma gandhi's uh, 100th birth anniversary so that time uh, i was 9 year yes i was able to understand what is it and gandhi father of nation then the local uh, leaders like anna thurai kamaraj and all these things but above all the bharati like uh, freedom fighters and all but above all gandhi ji was uh, the 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 big uh, you know hero like thing it was there and in, in the on that day and the whole school the village elementary school the teachers they decorated the portrait of the gandhi like uh, swami ji i mean like temple thing and they pull a small chariot like thing and that was the strong imbibement of you know analyzing understanding the the power of gandhi then all the people who came there it was a long procession of uh, small boys uh, and girls and teachers and the village people also they gathered and they started walking for more than 3 uh, to 7 kilometers 3 to 6 kilo 5 kilometers in in the whole village and neighbor village like that the children we used to walk so that day was a strong uh, imbibement of uh, gandhi and and ahimsa non violence something like this one and uh, the, the 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 direct encounter of uh, or, or the facing of ahimsa uh we used to talk a lot about uh, my my tuition master when i was a small boy my tuition master was a staunch uh, you know talker of uh, jesus so he used to put a small small um, uh, uh put small small dramas on jesus christ and uh, it then then jesus christ like uh, forgiveness forgive forgive Uh, you know one slapped in, uh, in one side and they show the other side of the face and again then uh, continuously it's infinite forgiveness i'm i'm still remembering yes if he is beating again beating again and uh, pushing you again forgive 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 then when uh, till what then uh, uh, automatically it's infinite so that kind of understanding of forgiveness and the coincidence of uh, gandhi this uh, Uh, 100 year and uh, the then uh, that, that was the time itself i i i came to understand deep on on non violence ahimsa gandhi jesus and soft life and again uh, do something for a change don't keep quiet uh, then that's why it was reflected when i became a fifth standard boy only a 10 year boy then fifth standard boy yeah, that age itself i started talking more on gandhi i ta- started talking more on jesus and non violence and don't keep quiet ask in a passive manner ask don't quarrel because uh, surrounding your surrounding is always quarreling but to sort it out why can't you be passively you know move with the people ask the people request the people that kind of attitude started growing when i was a young man young boy can you say how you went from being a chemical engineer to a missionary for uh, panchayati raj and self governance at the local level again as i started uh, i was i became a curious boy uh, one is curious boy in learning and uh, becoming a uh, class first some kind of thing and curious boy in understanding the problems around me the i i born in a very pathetic condition so my father was a little uh, radical person and he was a government employee he was little educated very decent uh, periodist or a radical person so that's why uh, then he used to be you know uh, good and helping me and putting me all facilities to get a good education but uh, surrounding my around me all the people they they are from small huts and uh, day to day bread winners those days i am talking 69 70 old and uh, the 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 basic earning of the family was just 2 rupees 3 rupees or 5 rupees 
and uh, there was guarantee for only one time meal and there was no guarantee for afternoon meal for the children so i among the 50 or 60 students i was the only fellow who come in the afternoon to home and in my home if i go inside my mother used to provide a hot meal when i see other boys who are just going away from me and going entering their huts i used to see them uh, from the window they used to simply search for something if nothing is there they drink some uh, water from the pot and empty stomach they used to walk again uh, to the class uh, with me so again i was really it was really a pain sometimes i used my ask my mother uh, what is the solution for this one day she will give for one boy or two boy or three boy but she can't give she, she was unable to give for all the boys so when my family will give food for all the boys that kind of a uh, fire again for a small petty quarrel it starts as a small uh, you know people are conversing with something then again it became a quarrel then it became it ended with a caste clash and hundreds and hundreds of huts were burned and police used to come they let the charge the people they they chased the people out then the drunkard men around me then they used to beat the women my aunt or my my own distant relative women and they they were beaten up by by the drunkard men like anything this was really kindling every day oh god then somebody has to stop it my father tried something to solve all these thing but it didn't work so then it was not enough i was as a young boy i was seeing it was not enough so this is one side i understood the society and uh, that fire was keep on growing other side my own natural talent of studying more depth on chemistry even when i was a 7th 7th standard 8th standard boy in my village library they, those days russia used to supply lot of books called uh, low value i mean low price uh, editions science for children science for villages science for communities so i used to study the science particularly i got lot of interest on chemistry so i i studied chemistry well so one side i was competing with the other boys uh, boys and girls and uh, to get good marks other side i was parallelly studying the the inner problem of the community and the fire of finding solution for that somebody has to do my father has to do what father is doing is not enough then i was searching for something that kind of fire was keep on growing that's why when i became a chemical engineer all the people they uh, those days i am talking about uh, 1982 83 when somebody is becoming a chemical engineer he will work for the preference is first few rank people fourth uh, five five rank or 10 rank people who used to be absorbed in petroleum uh, industries interestingly th- th- this is again when i st- gandhi if somebody understands gandhi gandhi was very clear uh, when he was harnessed to the core he tried harnessed to the core and he was committed to the core and yes anything he commit it was core commitment then the path was dharma ultimate the value the output the base the the water the fluid in that is dharma so all these combinations it it always ended with miracles in that there was no defeat or success or anything like that i used to feel uh, when i was searching for the, the working and the petroleum industry i was yearning and everyone was counting the four year three four fifth year we will go in my case every month i get the salary i come and i tell to my parents my father was again as i told you my father was a radical he told my son you used to bluff and rob money from me to send to spend this for the community now it's your money you spend you need not give anything to me or to the mother so that was the excellent support i got from the father so every month whatever money i earn with that i count and i distribute the money for the social activities it may be Uh, working something on uh, liquor issue it may be working something on women development it may be working on on uh, promoting tuition centers like that so parallelly i was i was i was addressing the social issue it was a miraculous coincidence i happened to work with uh, swami ji it's called kundrakudi adigala a place uh, very famous mutt near madurai it's called kundrakudi adinam that uh, pitatipati that uh, that that leader of that mutt uh, he was a radical revolutionary saint he used to talk revolution so i happened to work with him uh, when he was trying to make his village as a model village 
So those 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 days, the Indira Gandhi, then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi adopted that as a model village. Then I was deputed and I volunteered, and the government deputed me to work with him in that village for promoting industries and all. Then uh, that has changed my whole view. Then he told. Ilango, you are all always you are bothering about uh, big country, big nation, big change or anything. And then he told your formula should be starting from small. So yes, your village is your India, and your village it's a walkable distance, mm -hmm. cyclable distance. Your village is countable population. It is approachable families. With all these things, with this kind of knowledge and commitment. If you go and work with the smaller community with 1,500 families, let it take two years, three years. You can completely understand what should be done. Make a change there. Then I got married. Then again the marriage, and I was able to convince my wife. Then I gave. Uh, I was helping my wife to become a postgraduate in chemistry. I was uh, helping her to get a job. The moment she got a job, she also kind of she was good enough to came forward uh, the, to resign my job. Then I came. I resigned the job. I came back to the village and started my my mission of working for the village yeah. with the support of my wife and my family. Um, before we go into the details of your work in the village, can you say a bit more about this combination of influences? Because you mentioned that your father was a periodist. And you are also influenced by Gandhi. So, can you say a bit more about the combination between Periyar and Gandhi in your life? And interestingly, anyone understand Gandhi, and Periyar was also a great fan of Gandhi. Periyar never objected anything on Gandhi. Periyar talked about the the, the bad uh, you know activities, bad qualities of that religion and worshiping of God in the name of God, exploitation. The name of God, people are split in the day. In name of God, uh, the slavery is maintained. That kind of thing only Periyar was opposing. And as such, Periyar, if you anyone goes through this, Periyar was even a big, uh, uh, you know, supporter for uh, temples, and he used to give money, he used to manage the temples and uh, the treasury of the uh, temples or anything. But uh, on the on the face of in the name of temple, when exploitation happened, that was the place where Periyar was opposing all this. And more than temple and God, Periyar was a radical on, don't worry, come on, don't fall, come, raise, raise up, ask questions, don't worry about it. That kind of uh, power uh, Periyar's uh, movement. Then, uh, then on Gandhi, Periyar had a tremendous respect on Gandhi, on non-violence, and Periyar never talked about violence. We are talked about the intricacy of the bad, or bad, or the the negative as uh, negative of the God and other other feelings and other things. But Periyar was a uh, never talked about uh, non-violence or I mean, sorry violence. So he had a lot of faith in Gandhi. That's why Gandhi and again Gandhi also had a lot of interest on Periyar. So Periyar and Gandhi they 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 were having a lot of relevance in in fighting the issues of uh, you know. Women right for the women and uplifting the Dalits, particularly the the so-called uh, uh, lower class people or anything. So the untouchability. Then Periyar was again leading great movements here. So Gandhi was uh, using Periyar as a big tool uh, in South India, particularly Tamil Nadu, uh, for uh, liquor uh, anti-liquor movement prohibition. So uh, there was a combination, and uh, the, that's why the combination of polite humble simple and all these things we can and again though no question of budging if it's a truth then fight for it walk for it somebody is beating don't stop it talk the truth that's gandhi periyar yes you have to if at all you are not doing who will do that kind of vigor i gain from periyar so the combination really worked well in your childhood was caste an issue and caste violence did you have to deal with that at all? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Even till today, uh, now I'm 60, running 60, till today, the, that, uh, the caste based treatment of uh, children. Nowadays, people are talking, yeah, we are not practicing untouchability or anything, so called the upper caste or anything, people. They cannot, they cannot practice openly the untouchability. Otherwise, 
in 1968-67, when I was a young boy, the eight-year boy, nine-year boy, all 40 to 50 children who were studying in the uh, middle school in 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 a, in a in an upper caste area, and all of us were allowed made to sit uh, back bench. One, second, in the in the 11 o'clock, 11:30, that interval period. But uh, yes, we used to come out, and nobody was there to. Nobody will allow and give one glass of water. Those days, the schools there there was no uh, you know water tank or anything. The children will come out and jump and go to nearby houses, and uh, some houses will offer water. So for us, the children from the so-called uh, you know Dalit colony and all, we were not given water, and all the forty boys and girls, we used to go to the nearby paddy field. And in the paddy field, those days there was no pesticides. There was only organic fertilizer and all. So there was no pesticide. That's why we used to go to the paddy fields and just clear that water and drink. Sometimes the teachers from the so-called upper caste areas, nearby villages, they come and they teach and they did not allow us to touch. Anybody, sometimes even boys and girls, they fall on the teacher. For that, the teacher used to beat us. So this kind of small, small things. And again, when a boy get wounded in amidst in in the mid of uh, a, the upper caste area, suddenly we need water. Suddenly we need something. Yes, when we, even the boys and girls, when we cry, nobody will come out and give that. And our own way, we have to tackle that. So this kind of caste and uh, the untouchability, it really touched me in the big way. That's one. Second one is the so-called uh, the so-called uh, lawyer caste people, the men, the, the worst drinking habit of the men. Those days it was illicit liquor. People they brew their own liquor. They drink like anything. They beat the women, and uh, the women beating by the drunkard husband. That was a very powerful impact in my soul. Then. So what was the final uh, trigger for you to give up a very lucrative profession and dedicate yourself fully to uh, the Gram Swaraj work? Was there any main trigger or what gave you the confidence that you know you could do this? Yeah, one is uh, it's a, a beautiful partnership. My, my wife uh, in the beginning, though she's also from a very little poor background. Though in the beginning she had ambition like, you know, you are a scientist and I will also become a scientist. We get settled there. We will put our children to central school. That was the, like other normal ambition. When she started understanding slowly my interest of going back and doing something for the community, she understood it. After all, yes, what is wrong in that? But the only thing is now the children are there. We got two children and we have to work and, and what is the future for them. I, I radically told them, what is the future? When other people are having some future in our around us, what is wrong? What, what, what should be the new future for your children? Then she said, okay, all right. Up to that level, I may not come. Let me try for a job. Let us try for a job for me. And once we get the job, I will take care of the children by staying in city or a little nearer to you and, uh, and the family. Don't worry. Then you, you go ahead. That was one clearance from my wife. That's a beautiful idea. Then again, my own father. Uh, but he used to wonder, he was, he was not happy that I'm going to resign the job and coming back to something. But he used to say, Amama, yes, yes. You have to do something. Somebody has to do something. Yes, that kind of contemplation from my father. The third interesting thing is, when I was working with the Swamiji, he asked me, Ilango, what is wrong? Why can't you resign the job and go and do straight away involved in, in, your, in your village and become a panchayat leader? Why can't you do this? Then I told uh, Swamiji, no, no, I'm working for a very important project, defense project. What is it? Then I, he, I told uh, it was working for submarines. Then the spontaneous uh, radical Swamiji told, oh, so a submarine, if one Ilango goes out, the submarine project will not stop Ilango. Hundreds of Ilangos are there to take care of that. But which Ilango is prepared to quit all this thing and go back to villages? That is the need of the hour. What year were you elected Sarpanch? Yeah, it's, it, the elections happened in 96, and, uh, but I resigned the job in 94. Two years I stayed in the community with the community. 
started closely working and interestingly i happened to learn lot from the uh, kerala's uh, people's plan campaign ppc before panchayats the present uh, finance minister of kerala then he was leading thomas isaac he was leading a big people's movement people's plan campaign i used to go there and understand the gram sabha the the ward sabha the people's plan campaign so with all all ideas i was also coming and i was working in my village for two years when at last when 1996 panchayat elections came i it became easy for me to contest and i i of course in, there was a little opposition from the political parties but easily i i i won and i became the sarpanch so in your work on uh, in favor of gram swaraj in what ways have you been able to uh, reduce or eliminate the violence that you described in everyday life earlier has there been a change yeah that yeah interestingly that's why when you uh, when i tried as a individual youngster even yearning person even as a young scientist i came there i was involved with the community to stop all these things yes to some extent i was able to penetrate into the community and i was able to make changes but i was not having the deciding authority i was not having power to convene people convenes meeting i was not having enough uh, you know the, the, that kind of power to uh, do some kind of radical changes now the present 73rd amendment the panchayat raj system panchayat is a local self government as per the constitution now it is diluted for the past 20 years but in the beginning 1996 the then chief minister karnanidhi was there and he was really a, he was again one of the great radical and he told uh, he even put a committee of a, a, a beautiful a excellent ias officer to give more power for panchayats so then that was the beginning so i started demonstrating utilizing the the, the very the powerful uh, panchayat raj system then i called the gram sabha and in the gram sabha everything was discussed then plan and the planning process and participatory process i learned from kerala then with that uh, then I, i was able to make a beautiful plan of my panchayat all 50 year felt needs should be fulfilled within 5 years a beautiful uh, methodologies and beautiful financial workings then when the when this was discussed in the gram sabha people started understanding kerala became the pioneer in in putting people's participation every 1 rupee of the panchayat some panchayats in kerala they demonstrated 1 rupee of the panchayat will become 2 rupee by the people support that uh, we implemented in our our panchayat we call namak name we for ourselves so panchayat will have 1.5 lakh rupee means then another 1.5 lakh will be mobilized by, from the community it need not be cash somebody who is having the brick the brick will come as a contribution from the community somebody is having a bullock cart and he is contributing his bullock cart for 5 days work which is which, which was worth for 2000 rupees somebody was having tractor half season tractor will be given by the farmer the drivers the driver will be given half the salary of the, the driver will be given from the panchayat so tractor is there driver is there some 10 teachers or some government employee or good employees they will put 1000 1000 1000 rupees like 10000 rupees comes as a, a diesel charge so diesel is there driver is there manual labor is there and 50% salary is coming from the panchayat then like that uh, every 1 rupee was becoming 2 rupee every 1 lakh was becoming 2 lakh that was introduced and then chief minister he came forward he adopted that as a model and he declared that as a state state scheme using that as a pioneering or pilot panchayat i my panchayat was was, was given around 2 crore rupee he gave 200 lakh rupee then with that uh, we made a terrific works like uh, all the water bodies were desilted all the money was given into the people's committee no contract uh, nothing so transparently it was doing and we stopped the illicit liquor brewing liquor brewing and so that uh, the money which was uh, revolving in the projects was given as employment for the people it became the livelihood and that was the time i was strongly understanding the depth of gandhi's gram swaraj so i i understand more on gandhi and uh, the real uh, the situation like when we stopped the illicit arrack brewing about 360 families they have to be given employment opportunity for livelihood uh, it was a violent situation 
either we have to do a continuous employment for them at least every family 60 to 80 rupees to 60, 100 rupee otherwise the day we have to allow them to go for illicit era grooming so then automatically they, they, the government came in and it gave huge money and with that money the people's committees were formed all the families involved in illicit era grooming or jobless families we made people's group the money was given in the hands then technical support and other guidances were given from the panchayat and me and other government department with that uh, the money was spent all the uh, uh, ponds were deepened and the continuous employment and that was the time we started studying more on jc kumarappa we started studying more on gandhi's gram swaraj then network economy then uh, every village is a swaraj it means every village is a resource center you got enormous resource not only the the cultivables not only the grains not only the, the soil or uh, other things but the skill the people are there the manpower is there the skill is there if one village is trying to do it may not be possible yet if, if you are able to club five villages gandhi period kumarappa period they they tried for 10 villages whereas in my case then it's with the scientific uh, the, with the data collection we work for about 30 panchayats say about 130000 that is 1 lakh 30000 population in 30 panchayats they can work as a, then then the consumption pattern of the families when we studied those days i am talking about 97 98 or 99 those days it, we found more than 7 to 8 crore rupee was revolving in these 30 villages 7 to 8 crore rupee then we can start all all what you know you need rice you need bindi you need uh, uh, you need uh, turdal you need sambar powder you need uh, uh, towel and something like this all the commodities about 40 commodities in this in this 30 villages we can distribute the production activities mm -hmm. so that the 40 villages can emerge as a, a beautiful sustainable economic zone as a scientist I could have gone for a vertical growth model. Here it is a horizontal thinking, horizontalizing the knowledge and horizontalizing the network. That kind of thing happened uh, in 1998-99. I was almost a, a strong a Gandhian economist. One, more than Gandhi, Gandhi, if somebody is struck with Gandhi, then with Charka they will say, now I'm a technocrat, I'm a technologist, and 10 years I was a scientist. So, okay, Charka, oh, you feel drudgery. Now how to reduce that drudgery? Go for uh, electrification. Electrification is costly. Then why can't you go for solar? This kind of innovative ideas, appropriating the technologies according to the needs of the community. These are all combination. My experience as a scientist. Then I started traveling to IITs or CSAR laboratories and finding the technologies, methodologies, packages to create employment, to create uh, micro enterprises in the villages based on the network uh, of villages. That's why we used to call, it is called a network growth economy. Like uh, it is Alfred, I used to talk even more than Alfred, uh, Alfred uh, Marcel or uh, Adam Smith or anything. This network growth economy based on Kumarapa, based on Gandhian ideology, that's a complete solution for a, a, a happy, hunger-free, heart-free, happy people like that. So these are the developments in that period. In what ways can network growth economy bring uh, non-violence uh, to counter the structural violence of the macro economy? Yeah, interestingly, so instead of, in my case, I never go to the macro economy. I, I never oppose other people. So rather, I, I because my problem is my village. Again, not only my, our problem is the people at the bottom of the pyramid. And interesting part is, People at the bottom of the pyramid, they are not orphans. They are working force. They are sweating people. And people at the bottom, they are very much connected with the soil. They are very much connected with the water. They are very much connected with the cows. Interestingly, I must refer the whole 120 days of this COVID lockdown. This country is surviving happily. There may be the talk like uh, what will be the, the GDP or BDP or whatever. But there, people are not hunger, people are not suffering, people are not starving. Yes, the starving because of the mismanagement of the migrant labors, this kind of thing. But still, 
the country is feeding still the fruit is available still the milk is coming to you at your doorstep you may be in bangalore you may be in uh, mumbai you may be anywhere still food is there food security is there so who is the uh, 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 where is the resource the resource of the villages now the network growth economy what i talk it connects with the soil it connects with the water it connects with the community it connects with the sweating it connects with the sun so that's why the swaraj abdul kalam I, i i became a good friend of abdul kalam he used to listen to me on on promoting the the food security villages we used to call in tamil annakodi annam means food annakodi means we will we will we will declare villages the annakodi that flag of food will be hoisted and there no hunger no hut everyone anyone can come and we can offer you food that was the declaration we tried of course abdul kalam and me we tried using the network concept so in the in the network economy model everything is already going there we have to fine tune with the technology the appropriate with technology so that the productivity will be more and the surplus will be there and because of that the surplus will be exported to the nearest town the nearest town now after the covid and all the nearest towns when you are guaranteeing a good food good fruit good uh, ghee or good butter good uh, small cotton towel everything then the concept of swaraj and self sufficiency or self reliance will come for that the unit should be a small unit that unit should be panchayat kerala the panchayat is about 25000 families or something in tamil nadu or all over india it is only 5000 population or say we do something in such a way and a, 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 a population size of about 1 lakh to 1 lakh 50000 people uh, living in villages they can promote uh, the technology they we can promote micro enterprises so that food security roti kapda makan all the three areas we can go for beautiful building materials now we have got excellent uh, technology where people can make all variety of varieties of cost effective and eco friendly building materials you can get house so housing problem is solved food agriculture fine tuning agriculture with appropriate technologies automatically in a non violent manner excellently without much power so we can make uh, food security then uh, kapda then automatically cotton cotton growing micro spinning not like with the cherka old gandhi and type now humber cherkas are there then we can modern way like we can operate them with solar energy then uh, you are weaving with solar energy dyeing with natural dyes so kapda problem is also over so roti kapda makan all the three areas we can 100% move to our self reliance it will not take much time just fine tuning this maybe one year time or two not huge money so with this this is after this is the model for understanding the non violence growth we have got a beautiful technology of energy audited mode and efficient usage of solar that energy swaraj don't worry you, whatever power you need even for air conditioner somebody wants and the, the power is possible by solar and other means so energy security and other other securities are there automatically that's the real uh, you know meaning of swaraj uh, and as sometimes i used to promise uh, when dalam used to say he asked me lango the day when villages or the community generates their own electricity and keeping away from the grid dependency on the grid is automatically you can't say you are independent so long you are depending on the grid you are not independent the real day of independent is you should generate or community should generate its own electricity manage everything with that so for that the network economy is an excellent package and we have got 40 to 45 45 kinds of technologies and every cluster of Uh, uh say about 150000 uh, that 150000 population we can run about 400 types of enterprises 400 types of enterprises into 20 people about 8000 people they get straight employment surplus will go to uh, so to uh, towns the which is not produced in the network can be imported from the towns for that of course the underlying factor is the strong panchayat like uh, community as uh, a panchayat is the constitutional system available that's why let us make use of the panchayat and again let, let us have a vibrant gram sabha 
and uh, Gram Sabha based panchayat, people's participation, and yes, even for the whole country, towns, Delhi, Mumbai, uh, Calcutta, they can happily wait. They can happily, you know, stand. They can be helped uh, for, by the by the villages. In what ways does the Panchayat Academy work uh, towards uh, having non-violent dispute resolution or uh, non-violent ways of uh, resolving differences? Yeah, interestingly, the Panchayat Academy, then I, I thought like when it is possible in Kutambakam, in my own village, which was one of the dangerous or negative village and which was transformed, in five years time or even 10 years time maximum. So when this was possible in this village, why not in other villages? So automatically every village is having the panchayat. So why other panchayats are not doing? Then I was searching for working panchayats, network first, then automatically they are all demonstrating panchayat. Then automatically then aspiring, aspiring panchayats came in. So automatically then from 120 it went to 700 or 800, and that was spreading like anything. So out of 12,500 panchayats in Tamil Nadu, easily 2,000 panchayats are very good panchayats. Out of that, 150 panchayats are demonstrating panchayats, about 700 panchayats aspiring and going on that line. That is the Panchayat Academy. That Panchayat Academy, it's, a, it's not a teaching model. It's a learning from the brethren. The Panchayat Academy, Art Academy is not a classroom. And we are inviting panchayat leaders to go to a... Uh, demonstrating panchayat leaders' place. He stay there for three days, four days, or five days. Just sitting and sharing the experience with the brethren. It's called learning from the brethren, learning from the mother type of thing. It's not that, that the model panchayat leader or demonstrating panchayat leader, he will not behave like a teacher. Because he is also a panchayat leader. He will share how he has done it. And other people will say, oh, can we do this? Yes, you can do this. Or I can also do like this. I have done like this. So it's a sharing of good practices among good people. That was the Panchayat Academy. In that, the greatest tool available is your Gram Sabha. Gram Sabha, the Panchayat leader, is a convener of the Gram Sabha. He's not a, a leader to dictate or anything. He's a convener, the Panchayat president. Sometimes Panchayat president say, I'm a I'm little tired today. A senior elder of the Panchayat uh, in the Panchayat, it may be a teacher or it may be anybody, he may be nominated to conduct this panchayat, I mean, Gram Sabha. Gram Sabha, people, if they come with the agensa, knowledge of non-violence, to solve, resolve, discuss, it's a, prop, it's a place to discuss, it's a place to arrive a solution, it's a place to demonstrate. So it's a beautiful model. That's why the power of Gram Sabha is the power of people. That's why in Gram Sabha only we can see the model like we vote, we govern. We participate, we govern. In the other type of democracy, it may be MLA or uh, even the parliament, we vote, you govern. We elect you, after that you govern us. Whereas here in the Gram Sabha, in the Panchayat, we vote, we elected a system, we are sitting and participating in the system and we started governing ourselves. That's called we vote, we govern. So it's a beautiful system is available in the Gram Sabha. Everything, whatever I talk, whatever you contemplate, anybody, everything is proven, demonstrated in Kerala. Yeah. The world has to know, not only India, the whole world has to know from Kerala, go there, because of the powerful discussions, because of the powerful participation of the community, Kerala has become the model for Gram Swaraj. So mm -hmm. they are sorting out everything. Mm -hmm. So that's why seeing the Kerala model, demonstrated model for the world, now uh, it's a high time, even 20 years have gone, Tamil Nadu or other parts of the country. But still, another 5 to 10 years, if we take a U-turn and work on the Gram Swaraj, Swaraj model, yep, absolutely there is a chance to see a, a beautiful, heart-free, hunger-free, uh, Mahatma Gandhi's vision of seeing the permanent smile in the faces of the poor. That is very much possible. I am very much uh, aggressively working on that. Thank you so much. Thank you.